We're live. We're live. I'm Ron. It's Tales from the Lounge, and this is Chris. And this is our Cigar Company Spotlight. First in a series, first Twitch series, and we have no freaking clue what the hell we're doing. So, uh, I feel like we got a producer since my buddy's standing in the background, like yeah, he's like kind of watching over and, us. And, 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 and <laughs> it, it's it's going to be crazy because we don't have a clue what we're doing. And I'm not sure how well that intro went in because I didn't even have my mic on yet. So I probably came across as horrible. <laughs> oh, so let me get this uh, monitoring open here so that I can at least see what I, everybody else is seeing. And what's sad is nobody's watching. Well, then that makes this real easy. Watching. Well, we you're got, watching. Our producer, but nobody, <laughs> nobody online is watching yet. Yeah. Uh, I can almost guarantee that. So let's see here. And if anybody is watching, it's probably just my they wife. They have no idea what they're missing out on. Well, that's true. That is definitely true. Because this is going to be a lot of fun and uh, hopefully... Well, I know that I have some facts about the cigar company we're talking about that even the Frakes Brothers didn't know about. The Frakes Brothers didn't know about? Nope. By the way, had congratulations. No congratulations. We started this show... A lot better on time than the industrial uh, Saturday at the shop yeah. has ever started. <laughs> They're like 10 05 ish. Uh, but I'm still not sure whether we're actually, uh, Dale's from Lounge, what if are you We're smoking? actually doing anything? Yeah, I don't know whether we're actually doing any. Yeah, we are yeah, doing we are. something. We're there. All so right, we're, there. we're here. Good. Now we can see ourselves there and there. Uh, yeah, but I can't read that all the way across there. No, that was I can't. kind of the deal. Even with these glasses, I can't. Uh, let me see here. Yeah, because that's behind. So that's a little freaky. Yeah, it but is a little like, freaky. I've already talked about it. And there, and look, he's going to like try and find it and look on and get on so we have a follower. So, let's start off with the uh, obvious stuff. First off, glad you're here. Let me close the garage door. Oh, So we don't have as much uh, noise? Yeah, I was going to do that and I forgot about it. Hey, it's our first show. It's a little rocky. It's okay. Pay no attention to the loud garage door noise. I even had lights and I forgot to turn them on. Oh, wow. That looks much better, I think. All right. All right. Again. We're gonna pour ourselves a drink. Today we're gonna to talk about Patoro's Cigar Company. And where are they out of, Chris? They are out of Switzerland. O Oatland? Oaten? Oaten? O L T. You don't have to pr I don't you know don't how to pronounce, pronounce it, right? You don't have to pronounce it correctly. Olten? 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 I think Olten, that needs to be a thing. Olten, oh, and uh, from now on, Chris and I have decided that we're gonna do these broad broadcasts without our pants on <laughs> and make y'all wonder whether we're lying about it or not. So. There you go. <laughs> I guess that means I can't stand up. No, nope, you can't stand up. <laughs> All right, well, here, before I take my first drink, uh, let's get it started off right. Cheers. Absolutely. Cheers. And we're not drinking anything overly expensive here. We're drinking a little Monkey Shoulder. And, you know, while I like Monkey Shoulder, I like a couple of other b cheap blends a little better. But I love Monkey Shoulder because, one, it's got the cool monkeys on the uh, bottle, and I can harass the hell out of Ty Demery with every bottle. Yeah, because yeah. <laughs> he has an adverse uh, reaction to monkey shoulder. So Well, he just has an adverse reaction to drinking three-quarters of a bottle at well, one city. <laughs> so does Noah. So. Oh, right. well, you know. We're not here to talk about you those, know my, those clowns. You, you, know, you know my motto, though. Alcoholism, a terrible thing to waste. Right. All right. There you go. All right. So uh, we are talking about Patoro, and we're actually going to start off, and I forgot a lighter. Did you bring your lighter? No, because I figured the guy's uh, house I was going to would have a lighter. Uh, you're right. I'll be back. I asked you, do we I need to bring not, cigars? Do I need to bring anything? We are not going to get like, this right no, the first time, and if we did, it would be a one shot, and we'd never get none of them right after that. That's all right. It just allows me to look at my notes and figure out what I have that you don't. So. That's right. All right, so while Ron is gone, um, we are talking about Patoro Cigars in this segment. So every week 
we're going to pick a different cigar company and smoke their cigars, tell you a little bit about their cigars, but really dive a little bit more into the company and tell you some, hopefully, little known facts about each of the companies uh, as we do it. We'll do our own research and from different sources and hopefully uh, give you a little bit of education on the cigar companies that we decide to cover each week. So that's that's the gist of what we're trying to do here. So we hope you enjoy it. And, and if, if you don't, screw you. Yeah, well, it's <laughs> our show. Fun. It's our show, <laughs> not yours. Feel free to send in questions or comments. Please not, do. Not that we'll answer them or pay attention. No, we will if you no, do. No, and, and, that's, and that's part of the reason why I pulled up the feed here. I wanted to make sure that we could see uh, uh, any questions that popped up. And like, uh, uh, like I said, nobody's watching right now. And the first few shows are probably going to be that way. So it's going to be easy right. for us. It's good practice for us. It, exactly. We can go back and watch this when we're rich and famous and we make money off these. And that's right. Say, look how bad they started off. And, and, and by the way, folks, if... If you should see the wall back here kind of start waffling a little bit, it's just the drugs you're on, not the fact that this is just a fake tarp. So, <laughs> uh, All right, so... I thought we would start off with the cigarellos. The cigarellos. When were the cigarellos introduced? I don't know. When were they introduced? 2016. 2016. Yep. Well, they, because that, you don't always have the time to... Enjoy a cigar the way they want you to be able to enjoy a cigar uh, with their regular cigars. So they wanted to give you a really quick smoke, but packed with the same flavor and enjoyment uh, that you get out of their regular. Yeah, because these are co these are completely Dominican Republic uh, tobacco uh, from their farm, and so. Uh, and they have quite often been mistaken for. Uh, hey, are you smoking a joint? What is that? <laughs> I've never mistaken them for a joint. No, but I have. But I, I have, have people ask me that. I have. I have. A, Especially when you get down to the very end, <laughs> you're trying you're to trying smoke to, it out. Yeah. You're trying to smoke it out. <laughs> we'll get to the real stuff of the show uh, here in a minute. I haven't had a cigar yet today at all, and this is the first smoke I've had and I'm just gonna take a minute to enjoy it because that's really the biggest thing about cigar smoking is it's a way to sit kick back and relax and enjoy yourself and uh, just kind of unwind am I wrong no you're you're totally right I mean and that's that's part of the the passion and mission and value statement that Patoro has is they want you to have that a supreme experience each and every time you smoke one of their cigars. I think one of their taglines is "Everything is possible." Yep, kind of everything is possible. Uh, one of their taglines. So that's uh, well, you know, and, and funny you mention that, but you know, people say things are impossible all the time, and then you know, it may take a long while, but all of a sudden it is possible. You know, it is. They never thought we'd go to the moon. That's right. Well, and. They never thought they would uh, I, successfully transplant plant a heart. I mean, right? I, I, to take it a little back to work. I just have been with my new company for a little less than three months, and we started our first pilot. Uh, we had a new tool that wasn't even started or created until I started. Already stood up and working and functioning with some automation, and we started it uh, on Monday of this week, which. My boss and the rest of the team didn't think we were going to be able to get it stood up as quick as we did. So, you know, with with the right team members and the right things, everything is possible. Well, you know, that's kind of like a, and I'm going to bring up industrial cigar again. Quarantine hit, and they s stood up an e-commerce site in two days, yep, completely. And I was amazed. I mean, I would have said that was impossible. There's no way you could do that in two days. And they did that and had a huge selection of uh, stuff available online. They even did, have been doing just as good, if not better, than some days when they were completely open. Yep. <laughs> I'm not surprised sales, by so, that either. Yeah. But, uh, online is, is definitely a, a, a boon to any business if it's marketed properly. Uh, okay, so back to Patoro. Uh, for those of you who do not know, uh, Patrick Martin started Patoro in 2001. Uh, he had been a uh, 13-year career with Davidoff and uh, as their uh, uh, chief product manager, uh, and uh, was their branded uh, uh, ambassador for uh, Switzerland. 
that's where they're out of. Yeah, for uh, what, working specifically with the Avo and Griffin brands or yep. something like that? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. All right, your turn. Um, let's, let's hit the people first. Yeah, okay. So he was looking for the right business partner, the right person to partner with. Um, and found um, uh, the Reyes family, right? Yep. Um, yep. Six generations of uh, out of the Dominican Republic uh, to, in the tobacco industry knew a lot about it and felt like that was uh, the right fit. Augusto Reyes, I believe it was. Yep. Um, and partnered with them, and that was in two, like you said, two thousand one. Yeah, but he didn't team up with Reyes till two thousand nine. Was it? Well, but he teamed. Well, he used their tobacco in two thousand one. They teamed. Well, you know that's where it's a little hazy um, for me, because I think that when he started it in two thousand one, when the first cigars came out, um, I think they were using it. But I don't think Reyes officially joined the team until two thousand nine. So use their their tobacco and stuff. From what I was reading, he was looking for somebody to partner with, and he picked the Reyes family and their tobacco. Yeah. And went to them and said, "Hey, listen, you know, I've got, I'm already doing my stuff here. Let's do something better." And yeah. Augusto said, well, "Sure, why not? That sounds like a good deal." Well, what I found interesting, all throughout that is, all the people that are currently with Patoro. So the next one to join was. Uh, our friend. Our buddy. Our, our buddy. pal. Yeah, Dr. Pablo Richard uh, Schneider, the, um, who's the grandson of Ernest, Dr. Ernest Schneider, who had previously been an owner of Davidoff. So they all had ties to Davidoff somehow. Yes, they did. They did. Um, and then shortly after him. Uh, now, now let's 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 go back. To, let's go back to Pablo. There's a lot about Pablo. Oh, there is. And we know a lot about Pablo. We mm -hmm. we've we've known him. Uh, in fact, I chatted with him uh, briefly last night. I did too. <laughs> did you really? Because I couldn't find some information on one of the cigars in my note cards, and I was like, "You did the exact same thing I did." You sorry, sucker. It doesn't have how much, how long uh, the Brazil. Uh, tobacco is aged. Yes, All the does. others, I was able to find it anywhere on the internet. I could find yep. it, but it didn't say specifically for the wrappers on it. So I actually had to. I did a chat with him yesterday. I pinged him last night too, <laughs> and, I, and I'll tell you when I got to got to that one. Uh, he is doctor because he was a plastic surgeon, trained plastic surgeon, yeah. and he did it for a number of years, and really decided to get back into his passion and his family passion. Of tobacco, you know, as uh, Chris mentioned, his dad Ernesto uh, Schneider uh, was a former chairman of the of uh, uh, Davidoff Group. Grandfather, his grandfather. Grandfather, yeah. Otherwise, it'd be Richard. Yeah. Um, so we know how that relationship went. Yeah. Uh, uh, had the privilege of getting to have. We had dinner with him. No, I didn't have dinner with Oh, him. that's right. You didn't win that uh, dinner and uh, Fuck you. cigar. Sorry. <laughs> Fuck you, Chris. <laughs> uh, back in February, before all the craziness happened. Oh. Or sometime. Anyway, that was uh, that was a lot of fun, but he's he's doing really good. So. The name of the podcast is Tales from the Lounge, and the, uh, 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 the official title of the series is uh, uh, Cigar. Company Spotlight. Scar Company Spotlight. I didn't make it overly complicated. Now, did, where did you get that from? Is that on Twitch or? Text. Huh? It's just a text. Oh, okay, okay. I'm, I was thinking, I don't see any users here. Why didn't you? <laughs> I'm getting pounded by questions from everywhere. <laughs> oh. All right, so, so then after Pablo, Pablo joined in 2014. Yep. Then here recently, just this past year, in 2019, Mike Wydra and Vincent Krimble yep. uh, also joined, and they both had ties to Davidoff. In fact, Vincent had 29 and a half years with Davidoff. That's just crazy. So, yeah, I just, uh, you know, so there's a lot of good ties there, but also as long as some of those people had been with Davidoff, and Davidoff is a very known brand and commodity, for them to leave there, they must 
obviously have seen something uh, in Not necessarily. I mean, uh, you know, there uh, might have just been a better opportunity and they wanted to change. Better opportunity. That's and, seeing something to me, a better well, opportunity. Uh, and, and they might have just needed a change. I mean, might have needed a change, but you're not going to jump from from a Rolls Royce into a beat up pickup truck. People leave big companies not all the to time. go to startups not all, the time, all the time. So, I mean, you know. Well, what I'm saying is, is that that already at least leads me to believe that there's some so credibility saying, in their cigars. So you're, so you're saying Davidoff may not be as cracked up to be as far as working for them, huh? Well, they, this might have a terrible management structure, and so Could these be. people Could get be. out and build it better, and still keep cranking out great cigars. The one thing I did read was that between uh, Martin, Richard, Kimball, Reyes, uh, they have more than a hundred years worth of tobacco experience. Yeah, that's hard to come by. It is. It is. I um, mean, my buddy uh, Christopher, who I always call the crook keeper because he's old grumbly man uh he's probably 100 years old but he actually is only like three years older than me but i always give him a hard time um you know so okay so that that kind of covers the 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 main characters the main characters very good very good that um make up patoro so one of the things that I really liked about when I was reading about Patoro, about their mission values, and I'm sure you went to their webpage just like I did. Well, of course. Um, was you start there. You know, all the the passion they have, and they want that their each of their customers to have every time they smoke a cigar that intense, uh, memorable experience, that extraordinary experience when they smoke a cigar, and that's kind of drives all of their decisions and passion around. Well, I actually copied and pasted some stuff. (laughs) Okay. I cheat. So anyway, uh, part of their mission statement states they want to share positive emotions with Epicureans and Patoro partners uh, to uh, create an exceptional experience, uh, and it guides them to their defining values and the passion that they all share. And they share it all at Patoro, and it drives them to to go further and try to do better. Uh, and you know, there's a there's few companies where you see that kind of drive and that kind of passion uh, for uh, for their product or their service. Uh, where, don't get me wrong, they are making money, but I believe that it's not it's not all about the money. It's more about what they're giving back to the tobacco industry that is oh, their yeah. family for ge- families for generations. Yeah, so uh, they have a, you're talking about that, so you're making me jump ahead in some of my notes. You know, um, uh, I like that they have, and I think, I don't know, it's somewhere in here, it talks about, you know, they want to be, oh, so, so passion, right? Passion, go beyond ourselves, anything is possible. Right. Excellence strive for excellence in all areas and then responsibility this is where i was getting at yep so responsibility to, to their fellow humans as well as the environment and environmental sustainability yep right so the tobacco is pesti- pesticide free pesticide free um they also provide some of the best uh living and working conditions for all their workers uh which is uh not all cigar companies do that. Right. Um, that is so, correct. You know, they now, take care of their workers. An interesting thing, uh, all the tobacco is, uh, uh, like I said, pesticide-free, uh, ideally cured, fermented, but also between 3 and 12 years old before it even goes to the uh, cigar. Before it gets rolled, yep. Yep. And the rollers... Their least experienced rollers. Their junior rollers. Is junior what, rollers yeah. are 15 years in the rolling industry. Right. So that I saw that too, and I was like, "Wow, that is crazy." Number one, it talks about the loyalty of the company, and so they do take care of their people. Because if they didn't take care of you, why would you stay there for? Frog that bones. Long? That is tobacco is grown in the Dominican Republic, uh, 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 on the Reyes farms. And one thing that I did know, even though as much as we know about Patoro that I found out reading, is on the tobacco plant, 
the only leaves they use for their tobacco, for all their cigars, are the Seiko and the Lajero leaves, which are in the middle of the plant. Right. They don't use any from the bottom of the plant or the top of the plant. Well, the bottom of the plant's the dirty part. Yep. And the top of the plant is very young and the leaves are very small. Yep. So there you go. But it provides that rich, complex flavor and smoke uh, <laughs> that they like to say delights the senses. Right, so it gives you that extraordinary experience they want you to have when you smoke one of their cigars. All right. Now, you gotta pronounce the word of their workers. They called them torsadors. Is that, is that how you say that? Yeah. Torsadors? Torsadors. Torsadors. Right. And I'm only guessing that's correct. <laughs> if there's anybody who speaks, uh, I guess it would be Portuguese. Dominican Republic. I, I guess I'm not sure. Correct me if I'm Spanish wrong, please. Spanish of some sort. Yeah. Yeah. I'm guessing uh, it's torsadors, but yeah. Uh, please correct us, and that way we can laugh at each other some more. <laughs> okay. So. Okay. Did you find out what the what the star means? Are the five points of the star? Because that's what I that's what I tripped Andrew and Brandon and Nate. Is on it like the, is, is it like the uh, six sides of the uh, hexagon? It's similar to that, but. Not quite. Okay. So the five points of their star that's part of their logo that's been on there some of the beginning, you'll see a star and you'll see on their labels when we start talking about some of the cigars, it's on It's on all of them with the exception of the... Uh, the uh, VAs. The VAs, right? Yeah. And we'll get to those. We'll get to that. So it stands oh, for it. joy, serenity, inspiration, admiration, and satisfaction. So those are the, the they those are the intense emotions and experiences they want I you think to you win, experience. I, I think you win this this with show. Every cigar taste. That was that was a good one. That was good. I think yeah. you win on this one, man. So that's what I was like. All right, if I can get anything, if Andrew and 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 Brandon don't know that, they were like, well, they never told us that. I was like, you got to do some of your own research, man. Come on. Of course you do. Yeah. All right. Uh, I'll step away here in a minute. Okay. Are you done with that? Yeah, I'm done with that. Are you ready to start talking about cigars? I thought we were talking about cigars. Well, no, we're talking about, about cigar, cigar companies. companies. Let's talk about the cigars. And here's where I surprise you. Uh oh. I didn't. I didn't go all out. Mmm. But I do have this. Oh, you got the platinos. All right. So this. Let me flip through my notes here. We're in the Platino series. Do you know when the Platino series came out? What year? Uh, I didn't write that down. 2003. 2003. And this is uh, the Robusto. So the Platino actually comes in one, two, three. Three are officially listed on their website. Three right. Three sizes. Now However, they have produced others, but they have dropped them. Right. So if you can find them they'd be really rare yes so the ones that are still on their site are the toro the perfecto and the robusto, robusto. the right. one that you have here right um the other ones that they've produced are the corona the churchill and a a, a perla yep now they've said that i actually read a cigar rating on some guy's site and it was, and he called it a nub, and I looked at the picture and did the measurements, and it really looked like a nub, but I couldn't find anywhere else where, because it was a four inch by 50, and the Robusto, while it's five inches, or yep. 4.9. But it's not a nub. But it's not a nub. Now, I wonder if they produce those nubs for samples at the trade shows. They might have. And, and, they, and I'll bet that's, that's what, what it was. That's what I was thinking. Is and, it, it was, and it was a nub of the Robusto. It might have been. I bet that's what it was. Cause I because I saw the it, same it's review. A, it's, the same, uh, it's the same ring gauge yes, it's as, got, the Robusto, as the Robusto. So, okay. Yeah. So one thing I wanted to talk about before I open this thing, we start smoking these. It's backwards. Is it? Is it backwards? It's just backwards to you. It's just backwards to me. All right. Good. It's still... It's. They've got a really cool seal on the front. And I'm like... Why are you putting it way over there when you can put it here? But we're watching here. And we're that's, watching that's here. That's what's recording here. All right. Uh, the packaging on all of their stuff is immaculate. Uh, the boxes are really cool. And this, and I, 
this is a LE box that I picked up uh, a couple of years ago, the first time Pablo came down. Mm. So I've had this one a while. And uh, it was in my aging humidor, and we started talking about doing Patoro first. And I said, what are we going to smoke during the uh, show? Wow. I want you to look at this. Well, we talked about the rollers. The rollers is, that do this are... I knew you were... Yeah, I was like... Here we go. They sign every box that they put together. They the uh, they take such pride in their uh, the workers uh, the rollers take such pride in the work they do, and Patoro takes such pride in the work that they do that they put this in here, and the employee number uh, is here, and then the inspector's number is at the bottom, uh, or uh, signature is at the bottom, so. You know that they've gone through quality control. And and a roller is only allowed to roll four boxes a day. That's it. Not, oh, get out as many as you can, get out as many as you can. They're so focused and want to make sure it's done quality. Plus, a roller, if I'm a roller and I roll the Platino Robusto, guess what? That's the only cigar I roll. I don't roll any others. I only roll that. So my muscle memory and my technique is perfect every single time. Now, uh, and look, it's got this this uh, cloth, attention to detail, right? Uh, attention to detail. I mean, see, I don't have to save all this stuff. I'm such a collector. It's uh, and if my wife was watching, okay, they do speak Spanish in the DL. Oh, someone answered. Look at that. You know, and talking about the employee numbers, you say, okay, well, great, employee number 12. But sometimes you get one and you might smoke it from employee 12 and you get another box from employee 13. And while they're the same tobacco and everything, there might be something you like about it. There, Some people go to the extremes of, they'll go and request, I want roller number 12's box and roller number 12's box only. So and Bob Bones, we we have uh, tried this at Torcida, Torcido, Torcidors, Torcidor, and that's our best guess. How <laughs> you spell it? T T O R C E D O R E S. And see how the 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 cedar? There's a thin strip of cedar that runs all the way around it, and even the logo and everything are centered in the box. So that's what you see. Let's bring you don't do an unboxing in your lap, you do it on the table. So we are gonna smoke one of these today. Wow. How long have they been sitting, you said? A couple of years. A couple of years. So the platino uh is aged uh anywhere from five to eight years. Yep. All of the tobacco in it, wrapper, binder, filler, is all Dominican Republic. Yep. Um, an interesting thing about the Platino line is it does contain Piloto Cubano tobacco, which if they use the Lajero part of that, it's what g helps gives it strength. If they use the Seiko leaves, the Seiko leaves is what helps give it the more flavor. Is that, is that you posting that? <laughs> That's our producer, yeah. Our producer is helping us out here. Yeah. So the Seiko leaves, and the Seiko leaves uh, have the flavor characteristics. They're available next week, right? <laughs> of, hours. Of, <laughs> of nutmeg and cinnamon, a little bit of nutty, uh, and hints of earth and vanilla. Now, you know how I feel about cigar reviews. Oh, I know. I, I'm just telling and, you what, the, what that tobacco typically. Typically, right. Not all flavor. palates are going to taste that. Right. Uh, uh, some are going to be different. Now, if you'll notice, not only do they send you some cedar for lighting inside the box, and I'm not sure I would want to use that cedar to light my cigar, but each cigar comes wrapped in a thin piece of cedar to with the, light. And this is key. With. There's no tape around it, so I'm not going to burn no, anything I don't need to burn. I tell you what, if you haven't lit it by the time you get to the tape, <laughs> you, you just need to give up. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to use a V-cut on mine. I don't know what you like to use. but You know, anything bigger than a, like a 40, 45 uh, uh, 
diameter or a, uh, I like to use a V-cut. I like a V-cut and I used to use exclusively V-cut and then I got to talking to people like Pablo and Oliver and, and Darren's and big, Darren. and Darren's a big yeah Darren especially trophy. for a slow smoke uh, and when we get to uh, we need to try and coincide our show the week of uh, that Darren comes down and uh, yeah that would be nice and, then, and see if that so, would work so are you gonna are you gonna do the same thing I was gonna do no I'm gonna let you do yours this way I'm gonna do mine the other way okay. go ahead so when you get the cedar if you want to light your cigar with the cedar that's why it's wrapped this way what you do is you push it out a little bit so there's a you still get a little bit of the cedar you're gonna light it you're gonna light it so you can see it all right so we're gonna light the end of the cedar and then I'll hold it at a slight angle and then slowly push it out If I did it right, it'll burn your face off. Did you do it right? Not too shabby. Not too bad. Not too shabby. All right. You got to kind of hold it at an angle to make sure that it burns up the cedar. But the nice thing about the cedar is that nice cedar smell when you light your cigar. That helps add a little bit of that flavor to it, and it just gets it. It's a nice clean light. Um, yeah. So I like to do it, but not all cigars come with cedar wrapped around it. But you know, almost every box of cigars that I've ever opened, oh, they do have some do sort have of cedar. a uh, do have a sheet of cedar on the top, right? And then you can pull strips of it off and use just the cedar to light the uh, cigars. And you let the cedar burn out. These smoke cigars, the cedar smells great. <laughs> That's what I was getting closer to. I was like, that cedar smell. Our producer needs a cigar. I won't say no. <laughs> and a cutter. Oh. When you run out of scotch, let me know. I've got more monkey shoulder over here. So, the Platino line. So we're going to talk about the Platino line, or you want to start at the very top and, and work our way down? Well, we can. Well, we can start at the top and work our way down. Uh, okay. Uh, so you want to call, start with the uh, Grand Anejo Reserva? The Grand Anejo Reserva. I the hate saying it that way because it sounds like a hole. Well, or it makes me think of <laughs> makes me think of tequila. Oh yeah, yep. And you did the same thing I did. So you listed all the vitolas as well as what their sizes translated into. Oh, well, of course I did. The hardest part I had was when I went to the site. Yep. Sorry, and I just hit my mic. Um, is that the site is in centimeters? Yes. So then I had to do a conversion, and then but I did learn something. So ring gauge. Right? right, 50, 58, whatever. I was like, okay, how do I convert that into inches? What does that mean? I found out through my research that 64 ring gauge is equivalent one to one inch. inch. Yep. So if it's a 64 ring gauge, you're looking at a one inch diameter. That's a big cigar. Uh, but uh, you know, I like a big ring, right, ring cigar. Uh, and I say that, but you know what? I love the... Uh, there's quite a few Lanceros that I really love, too. Uh, yeah. Yeah, and we'll get to those later. All right, so the Gran Anejo Reserva started, was the first cigar released yep. 2001. 2001. All it's Dominican Republic. All Dominican, the wrapper, binder, and filler. Uh, well, it is Dominican, but but the wrapper is an Ecuadorian Habano leaf. I found that on one of the sites somewhere. They're wrong. You think so? Yep. Because that's what I was like, wait a minute, it says it's all Dominican, but what is this? Is it a Ecuadorian uh, Habano seed that that they well, put in the Dominican the, here's, and, because here's it's the, been there the for deal. so long? But here's the deal. It's all Cuban seed. Well, yeah. So, I mean... Uh, we didn't talk about the history of that, about how they even, how the Reyes family even right, got that's, out. That's that's another story. We'll get into it we'll eventually. Get, we'll, yeah. Because I got a note about that somewhere. You know what? That might be another series we pick up after we finish this one and Maybe. do uh, uh, tobacco farms. But the Gran Anejo is aged eight years. Yep. Eight years. Um, and it's a, and considered a mild strength cigar. Mm -hmm. and it's, two out of five. Uh, yeah, two out of five, which would be what? A four, four and a half, a three and a half, four out of ten? Yeah. I know most people use a one through ten scale. Yeah. I, 
But and it's the, it's the red label one. It is the red label. So this one is the black, black label, label, the Platino with a P and a star. The Gran Anejo Reserva is a red label. Looks just like this, except for it's a red label. Um, yeah, it's a medium to full. Um, you know, it, they say that the flavors are earthy coconut cocoa. with yep. some roasted nuts yep. uh, and hints of chocolate. And this one comes in a plethora of sizes. Yeah, this one has I mean, some of the most sizes I could find. So it, Churchill. It's got the Churchill, which is 7.5 by 60. The Perfecto. Which is 6.5 by 53. The Toro. Which is 6 by 50. The Bellicoso. Which is a 5.5 by 52. And then did you have the Robusto? Robusto is a 5 by 50. The Corona. Is a 5.5 by 43. The Lancero. Which is a 7 by 38. And then the Juancito. Juancito, sounds good to me. Five and a half by 48. Now, some of y'all are wondering, <laughs> why all these different sizes? You're using the, all the same tobacco and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, why do you create all these sizes? Well, the reason you create all those sizes is, is uh, because depending on how the blend works and how the blend is put together, you can get a different flavor out of each particular size. And the reason for that is because the percentage of the tobacco based on the cigar. And like on this cigar right here, I'm getting a fairly good balance of wrapper, binder, and filler to create the flavor. Now, if I were to take this same cigar and reduce the size and uh, so that there was less binder and less filler, I would get more wrapper out of it because the wrapper, which in case is the entire thing, would have a higher percentage. And so when you say a smaller size, or we're not talking about a ring, ring gauge. We're talking about ring gauge, right? Ring gauge. So a smaller ring gauge, right? So And so they build these based on the, the blending profile they're looking for and the desired experience they want out of the cigar. Do they want one that's going to last you 30, 45 minutes? Do they want one that's going to last you three hours? Or four, Mr. Pennington. <laughs> there's, there's, there's a couple of cigars that are my four-hour, what I call my game day cigars during football season. So that is the reason why a lot of companies do different sizes and uh, uh, different lengths. It's all about the experience that they're trying to go for and what it is required to get the blend that they wanted. And, I'll, and I'm going to jump companies here for just a moment to give an example. But if you'll remember... That was the big thing about the Fratello Texan. Yeah. The Fratello Texan is a huge ring gauge cigar. It's a full 60. Yeah. And the reason uh, Omar, uh, the owner of Fratello, uh, said he had to make it a 60 was he tried to make it in a 54. And the, the flavor wasn't the, there. The flavor was just not right. The, the, there was too much wrapper and really distorted the flavor, and he needed to expand the, uh, the filler out to balance out the cigar and had to do it in a 60 ring gauge. Now, the one thing I did find out. We're, we're, we know all this crap. I know. <laughs> the, the one thing I did find out about the Grand, Reser or the Grand Anejo Reserva is there are two other sizes we didn't mention that, are, um, that used to be produced and are no longer produced or only produced over in Europe and no longer, but it's the yep. uh, Gordito and the Perla, again. And the Gordito was a four by 58, and the Perla was a- Good enough for you, producer. Oh, yeah. All right. All right. Four and a quarter by 32. <laughs> so 30, a 32 ring gauge is really tiny. That's even tinier than most Lanceros. Yeah. So. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. Another gold star for Chris. No gold stars for me. <laughs> yeah, it's not about gold stars. <laughs> it's a, so that's another thing that I saw on one of their taglines was if silver is premium, Patoro is gold. I like it. I like it. Again, striving for that excellence. Yep. Right? All right. So anything else about the uh, no? The Grand I think we've got Anaheo that Reserva? one. Uh, that was their first one. That was their first one. Uh, and that's a, I smoked that cigar. Quite often, it's probably the because it, oh, I love the red band. I love the, the red band. It's it's a uh, it's a good everyday smoke. It's a little bit higher than well, it's not as, as 
as uh, pricey as the Platino. The Platino is probably there, well, outside of the VAs. Yeah. Uh, but the Platino is the higher higher end yep. on the Patoro, but a good, either the red or the orange band, but I like the flavor out of the red band a little bit more than the orange. I get a yep. little bit more the flavor f- profile that I like. And speaking of the red and gold band, the vintage. The vintage. So, the vintage, now so the Grand Anejo was eight years, the vintage uh, is ten years. Now that's the wrapper. Right. The wrapper is aged for 10 years. That's a and long you know, time. And that's, a, that's a lot of patience. You know, and that's the one thing I've always found fascinating about uh, cigars and wines and, and, and liquors and, and uh, bourbons and, and scotches and things like that. And that is the aging process. They have to sit on so much inventory. In order for a company to get started and produce a quality product, they sit on that stuff for so long before they can actually pr- produce the product yep. and get it out there for sale, it, you know, it's not. Just, can you imagine sitting on a product for twelve years? I know it's not like oh, before you could sell. I'm going to go open my own uh, cigar rolling place tomorrow, and you can start rolling cigars. Like you have no clue what's going on if that's what you think. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. All right, so the vintage, like we said, ten years. All all again, Dominican Republic uh, tobacco. It's it's a little bit stronger than the. It is a medium blend, and yeah. because of the age, it's got a much oilier and shinier sheen yes. to the uh, wrapper, and they are a beautiful stick. They are. Um, oh, it also surprise uh, surprise. Nice. Uh, oh, we've got a couple of the ones, so you can see them. So let's show them the the red label we just first talked about, the Gran Anejo. I see you've got, so that's the Grand Anejo, the first one. And now we're on the Vintage. Do you have one of the Vintage ones in there? Surely, oh, no, no. No, no. So the Vintage one looks exactly like the red one, except for it has an extra band underneath it. has an extra it gold band up underneath That says Vintage. Um, now the Vintage, and I think they're not available for the most part in the States. For the most part. Yes, um, kind of like the uh, VAs. Right. But if you have the right connections, we can help you out there. Um, <laughs> so it has. Oh no, we can't. It ha- yeah. <laughs> well, for the right price, I, I can help them out. Oh no, no, but- <laughs> no. Because the odds of getting more are always slim. Right. Uh, so it they list three that you can currently still buy, but I actually found five that they've totally done. But the main ones are the robusto. Yep. Which is a what? It's a five by fifty, right? And then the uh, petite robusto, which is a four by forty-eight, and then the perfecto, which is a five by five and an eighth by fifty-four. Right. Now, one of the funny things that I found is, you go to the Patoro website and they've got a plethora of information there, and I love that word plethora, by the way. <laughs> and uh, but one of the most interesting things is they're Europe. Everything's symmetric. So the sizes are metric. And when you send them over to the States, we have to convert all that to inches. And so what's funny is I'm sitting here reading seven and a half by 50 for the Churchill uh, Reserva. I'm betting it's not really seven and a half. I bet it's, if you took yeah. a ruler to it, it's an eighth one way or the other based on yeah, the metric it's, system. <laughs> it's, like, it's probably like seven and... 4.889 or something like that to where it's almost a half so you round so they it up. They round it up, exactly. And and like on the, what I found interesting on the 50 ring gauge is they would do something crazy like <laughs> 2.0 centimeters versus 1.9. Those, those are both considered 50 ring gauge. Even though technically it's not exactly the same ring gauge, but when you're dealing with centimeters and millimeters and all that, does it really matter? No. It's a good cigar. That's what matters. That's right. That's right. All right. So the other two, besides those three that I found, were the Cleopatra. And I saw the Cleopatra, but I, I, I didn't know whether it was a name for a uh, uh, one of the Robusto, uh, Petit Robusto. The, right, or, because it came out to be a 4x49, and I'm like, well, that's cl- as close to the Petit, Petit Robusto. Robusto. And then the other one was the Pyramid, and that was a 6x50. Um, and so you can't, 
I don't think we could get that confused with the Perfecto or the other Robusto, but I don't know that I couldn't find it being sold anywhere. So it might have been one that they just that line that they dropped or something. Right. It's a it's another uh, terrific cigar. Do we have some questions coming in from our producer there? Yeah. Sitting in the background, smoking a cigar, drinking his. Love it. I love it. Uh, I had a bonsai tree at one time a million years ago. But yeah, you cut something down and grow it for 10 years, it's still the size of a, of a mm. small bush, and it's not only art, but you know, you gotta, send a, you gotta work on it that long to get it to where you want. Yeah. And that, that's a beautiful example. Yeah, that's, that's a great. Uh... All right, so. We expect you at every show. Yeah. <laughs> I will say this. You don't have to be here, but you gotta be online. <laughs> so the wrapper is aged 10 years on the vintage, not this one that I'm gonna hand my hand, but the, uh, the, the filler is the same filler that's in the Grand Anejo Reserva. Right. It's the same filler. So very, very close. It's just that it's aged so, two years yeah. longer and than, it's, and, and, uh, that's why it's the vintage. Yeah. Right? It's a little bit older. It's kind of like your grandpa. Uh, a earthy, bit older earthy and aged woody notes, uh, hints of coffee and roasted nuts. Yep, yep. Um, and it's it's on it's a three out of five on their scale. So that's a medium blend. Yeah, it's a it's a medium. It's it's a medium to me. It's a it's another really good. You could smoke every day. Um, yeah, it's it's a it's a good one. Um, Absolutely. Okay. So after vintage, what's what's what we got? Now next? we're down to the Patinos, the black labels. Ah, the black labels. Nice, nice, nice. We nice. love the black labels. Uh, they're now, a full strength, all Dominican Republic uh, cigar. Uh, I'm going to let you. I'm, I'm going to let you uh, hit this uh, next fact because I know you got it. You know I have it. Oh, you're talking about the uh, Peloto Cabano tobacco that's in there. Yep. So. Uh, it's, this is going to work out great. It's about 60 or 70 percent <laughs> of this uh, Piloto Cubano tobacco or that seed that's grown there in the Dominican Republic. And the, the part that I found out is so on the tobacco plant in the center, we talked about earlier, mm -hmm. they use the Seco and the Lajero leaves. The Lajero leaves is what helps give it the strength. Yep. And the Seiko leaves is what really helps give it the flavor. The flavor, they want, yep. And that's right? where the the uh, the uh, the nutty and the earthy tones come from. And the Lajero gives you that nice peppery yes. uh, taste to it, uh, along with the strength. And that also is what gives you that leathery over uh, undertone in the aroma. Yes, it does have a leathery undertone. Uh, it's very faint, and it's not all the way. It's not all. It's not there all the time. And, and I'll, I'm going to hit on something that I really love about great cigars, or what I consider makes cigars great, is not just a good flavor, but as you smoke the cigar from the first third, the, the second third, and then the third third, that flavor of the cigar profile kind of moves up and down throughout the cigar. Now, I don't have a problem with a cigar that's just flat all the way through. Well, the, but the deal is, and the reason we enjoy the complexity is because we get those surprises. Right. You're smoking it long, and you're tasting. Oh man, that that really tastes good. And then all of a sudden, it's like, is that vanilla I taste? Right. Or is that is that, is that a little or is that a little cinnamon or something? Uh, exactly. Or, you know, that, and you go, you know. And then and then and then you'll be sitting there, and you get used to that, and then all of a sudden, it's like, ooh, now that's nice. Exactly. And the more complex, the more the enjoyment. And you know, years ago, I'd been smoking cigars for 20 years, and I knew what I liked, but I didn't know why I liked it. And once I started going to our cigar lounge that we go to, Industrial Cigar Company, um, and got a little bit more education, um, I started being able to identify those flavor notes. Now, um, our producer has a question. Oh, okay. So how do they get the flavors in there? Here's how they get the flavors in there. A lot of it depends on the region that they're grown in and uh, what is available in the soil content. Uh, a lot of the uh, uh, best tobacco growing regions are near mountainous areas and during the rainy season they will uh, wash down those nutrients and some of them, especially the ones with the heavy uh, coffee taste to them, they'll be growing coffee on the side of the mountain and during the rainy season it washes all that coffee laden sea, uh, 
soil down and then it gets in with the soil for the tobacco and that's where they get those uh, different uh, uh, flavors and the same thing with wines and that type of thing depending on the region the soil content and the weather is where a lot of those uh, flavors come uh, uh, unique flavors come from and add to the leaves themselves excellent question excellent answer yeah I get lucky every once in a while it's you know and it is and it's you know if you never thought to ask those questions you just smoked a cigar you could still be happy and enjoy a cigar but you do get a greater appreciation of the time and the effort and the skill that goes into making a cigar yes um all right so what what are the, so we've got some sizes we're smoking the robusto which is a five by 50 right uh they have a toro which is a six by 48 uh we have they have a perfecto which is a 5.3 by 50 right and then they have a couple more but they used to have a churchill uh i they, bet that churchill was good though oh i, I was like so as, after I did these notes this morning, I went into the shop and I was like, I want to see if they have a church. I, like, I don't remember seeing a Churchill. And yep. of course they didn't. they didn't. I knew they didn't, but I was like, uh, and then they had a Corona and then a couple others, but the Toro, the Perfecto and the Robusto, probably my favorite out of that. I typically go with a, a Robusto is typically the, the size or type cigar that I'll, the Vitola that I go with typically, not all the time. I like a, I like a Bellicoso every now and then. Well, I know you love those uh, 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 big ass Atabays. <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple of those, and the size of that uh, XO that we can get at the yeah. shop. Yeah. Well, we're, we're not we're not to the VAs. I know yet. we're not to the VAs yet. We're okay. not to the VAs. All right. Okay. So. Now we're down to the uh, the P series. Uh, that is the Orange Band. That is this one right here. Now this is where I had to call uh, Pablo last night. You had to call Pablo. This one, this one is only three to four years. No, that's not what I had to call Pablo about. Okay, this is a medium strong cigar. It uses a uh, Cameroon uh, wrapper yes. in Europe, but in the United States, we, uh, we use a Brazilian wrapper. Yes, but that's not what I had to call him about. All right, the P series cigars. Oh, are you talking have about the, names, the biblical names and everything? Have biblical names of kings and famous kings. And the reason they did that was a lot of companies use king names for their branding to show strength and uh, uh, quality value. and value. value. And so they went through and uh, named each size after a famous king. Okay. I didn't have to be biblical, but uh, I uh, I had to ping Pablo because on the website there's it's a typo. It's listed twice. Yeah, it's a typo. So I think I figured it out which one's which. But the other thing too is is this so also this also relates to wines. Yep. Because uh, a typical bottle holds so much, but the king name, like a, with the exception of Magnum holds much more than a regular bottle. And so I even have how much each of these names equate to for a bottle of wine. So we'll get to that. So, all right, so Jeroboom. Jeroboom is the Perfecto. Yes. And it is oh, a five. The short Perfecto, right? It's nope, a short. it's just the Perfecto. Well, see, I had it listed twice. The short, because okay. it's a five and an eighth by 50, right? Five and an eighth by 50, okay. Yeah. What's and the... Methyl Salem. Methyl Salem? Methyl Salem is yeah. the uh, Robusto. That's what I had. Good. The Perfecto is the... Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, the, the Toro is uh, Balthazar. And the last one is Toro. Corona. And that is uh, Demi. Demi. D E M I E. Okay. And then I also had the, the Salamanza. It's not on their site, but it was another one listed. And, and it, it got was... dropped a long time ago. Okay. Is that the Churchill? That is the Churchill. Okay, that's that's what I thought. So if you look at that, the Jeroboom, which so is... So the Perfecto and the Corona were named after the same king on the website. So I pinged right. uh, uh, Pablo that's what you asked him about. and said, okay. okay, here's what I've got. What is, the, what is that? And have your guys fix the website. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So the Jeroboom is 
four times the size of a regular wine bottle. The methyl salem or well, you know, at that? first I thought it was Methuselah, but it's not. It's uh, Methuselah Salem uh, is eight times. Methuselah, yeah. The the Salamanza we'll the, hell out of these. The, the Salamanza is twelve times, and the Balthazar is sixteen times, which kind of confused me because the Salamanza is the Churchill, and yet it is the longer one, but the Toro has a bigger ring gauge. And it's 16 times. So anyway, it was, I just kind of found it interesting. I, I'm a I'm a data, data numbers kind of nerdy kind of guy like that. So, and another gold star for Chris. It made still me no gold stars for me. <laughs> no, that, that that's. No, I, you got it for the flavors. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but this one is and, well, you know, and that's the thing about the P series, and and you know, and they're not overly expensive sticks. But they have such a flavor profile, and you know they're and and most of them are only three to four year uh, year old age tobacco. Uh, but you get it's the uh, youngest sweet, of all the cigars. Uh, and yeah, and and you get uh, uh, sweet butter notes. Uh, you also get woodsy and earthy. Uh, you can also get uh, uh, spicy undertones as well. All right, so I wanted to show them. I want to make sure I had this right. So this is the robusto and the Corona. And so the Robusto is a 54 ring gauge. And I should the, have taken those out of the wrapper. And the before. Corona is a 43. So when we were talking about the wrapper and the flavors and why do you do these different sizes, hopefully you can see that there's a pretty big difference um, in those two cigars, uh, the size. No, they can't. All they see is shiny cellophane. So again, you know, you're gonna get a lot more wrapper out of the Corona than you are out of the Robusto. So you can see how thick that is. Um, uh, comparatively to the filler. Yeah, so you get a lot more filler in the Robusto and less wrapper. Now look at the Corona, right? So it's a lot smaller ring gauge and so you get less filler and a lot more wrapper when you go to smoke that. And a lot of the flavor in a cigar is typically in the wrapper. I realize I've learned a lot since I've been at the lounge. Oh, you and me both. Now, you bragged how long have you been smoking cigars? Uh, over 20 years. Over 20 years? I've only been smoking period four. Well, there you go. There you go. Four years all cut up with you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I'm, a, I'm a sponge when I get a subject I like. I am a sponge. And Industrial Cigar Company and the, the partners that they have uh, teamed up with as far as their uh, uh, vendors go, such as Patoro, they uh, they have taught me so much in just a short, and technically I started smoking a pipe for the first six months. So, you know, three and a half years I have learned so much. The trip to Cuba didn't hurt any either. That's right. Um, so this one, like we said, in Europe, Cameroon wrapper. Yep. In the States, it's a Brazil wrapper. But the binder and the filler are all Dominican Republic. And you know Republic. what? The next time I see Pablo, I'm going to ask him about that. I'm not going to do it online. I want to get him on. I want to get him in the, in a lounge somewhere and go. And when we do our Q and A, why does the European get the Cameroon and us poor United States guys only get the Brazils? Right. So the interesting other thing that I found, if you found this or not, but the Series P has a blend of Peloto Cubano tobacco the Corojo tobacco and tobacco grown in San Vincent, one of the regions there. That's yep. just kind of where all the tobacco in Dominican Republic's grown. So what does that really mean? Good question, I don't know, but it does have an effect on the, the flavor profile of the cigar when you smoke it. Awesome, right? awesome. Because as we answered earlier, how do you get the flavor in the cigar? It all deals with the soil composition of where that tobacco is Well, and from. it also has to deal with the seed that it was uh, right. produced from and that type of thing. Uh, and and we'll get into that in a later show where, uh, you know, they'll talk about this is the same seed uh, that was uh, that was produced in like 1952 and they'll pull it out of storage. And the interesting thing about seed is if you have a seed from a plant that is from 1952, and you store it, and it's stored properly, and you 
plant it a hundred years later in the exact same soil, it will produce the exact same plant. And it's the same 1950s plant. Uh, and so a lot of uh, tobacco companies will do their, you know, their, this is our 1852 series. And that's because they're using seeds that had been stored from 1952 and uh, use that for their crop that season. Yep, I was still looking through my notes because there was something I was wanting to try to throw in there, but I can't find where I wrote it down, or maybe I thought I wrote it down and didn't. All okay. right, so that's the Series P, the orange label. That's the orange label. And, and now, now we're down to the green label, the Brazil. The Brazil. And I know that's it's, it's Brazil, because mm -hmm. there's no Z in there. It's an S. Right. Now, when was it introduced? You, you got know? me on that one. 2015. 2015. It's a medium to strong and it also uses the uh, uh, Cubra Brazil Hybrid Seed Wrapper. That's right. Uh, and the rest of it is Dominican filler and binder. Yep. Now it comes. And that in. is Pablo's creation. That's Pablo himself, creation after he had uh, taken a year to actually go down to the Dominican Republic and just work there in the factory, on the farm, and everything. Just yep. immersed himself in it. And during that time. Uh, came up with with uh, this this creation, the Brazil, the green label, right there. With that, that is the Bellicoso, uh, which is a six by fifty, and it comes in a gordo and a gordito. Now, interesting thing about the green label. I knew you were gonna hit that, and I'll let you have it. All right, so. That green is actually BRG green. And what that means is that's British Racing Green. Yep. And that has a significance because it stands for power, willpower, efficiency, and victory. Mm -hmm. So that's and some I of the symbolism. And so that's the other interesting thing I find about a lot of cigar companies, especially the ones that pay attention to detail like Patoro and many others. Not all of them do, but they're particularly a lot of the cigars that we smoke, they tend yeah. to pay attention to detail. It's not just I threw a gold star on there or I picked this color or that color. There's a lot of symbolism uh, in the name And significance and meaning. And significance of, of the branding behind it. And what, the, and what they explain is during... And a lot of thought during, that goes and, behind and it. And during, uh, uh, during the 60s, during the height of British racing, uh, a lot of the... Uh, winning cars had this uh, British racing green color yep. for their cars, and that's where they pulled that from. And they did. And you're right; it is a symbolism of the power and uh, efficiency of those vehicles, and the and the quality that they stood for. And since he introduced that, that has become one of their most popular. Yep, I'm not surprised. Cigars. Not surprised. So the green again, for victory again. Uh, uh, again, this one is a. Uh, uh, I'm going to use the word again. Plethora of flavors. I mean, you get a lot of dry oak, uh, ripe and creamy stone fruit flavors, and uh, uh, sweet creaminess. Uh, and and what I found is what what's what's weird when you say this is every now and then you'll get a hint of light pepper. Yep. Because you don't think with creaminess and some of those other things that you would expect to get pepper, but you do get a hint as you're smoking that cigar. Not all the time, but I, I find right near the beginning a little bit, um, and then near the end, I get a little bit of uh, pepper. Uh, and it's not a heavy pepper, it's just kind of like a, oh, a little bit of, oh, look at that. And again, that's what... i tell you what, we're going to have to do a show and have somebody actually demonstrate blending and how they my show. favorite one the one that does it uh, edgar edgar yeah. uh, we'll have to drag edgar it uh we'll have to do that one at the shop we'll do that one uh, all right what else about this one is that uh you got three sizes you got the gordo which is uh five and a half by 68 the bellicoso which we've already mentioned which is a six by 50 and the gordito which is a four by 58 all right. Yeah. All right. Winding down. Winding down. Okay. You get started on this one. I'll be right back. You want me to? Oh, are you, you're going to go fish some out, aren't you? I am. All right. So this last one, we saved the best for last. 
This is the Patoro VA series. VA standing for very aged. Uh, these were introduced in 2015 to the market. And it sounds like we have an Amber Alert, so I don't know how to turn my phone off with that. Um, so, all right, nice. Thanks, Amber. All right, hopefully uh, the kid gets back safe and sound. Um, all right, so uh, introduced to the market, uh, European market in 2015. Not introduced to the States until last year. And actually, our cigar lounge was the only lounge to carry it. I think they're going to expand that a little bit this year. There's supposed to be 100 boxes that come to the U.S. And only 10 stores will actually get 10 boxes. Now, I'm pretty sure that we're going to negotiate more out of that here at uh, Industrial. We hope, we, we hope that uh, Dave is able to do that. Uh, so My God, this smells so That good. is the, the Salamone. Yep. And it is a 7x58, and it is probably one of my top three favorite cigars that I've ever smoked in my entire life. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, and it also is not a cheap cigar. It's not an everyday cigar. I would love it to be an everyday cigar, but I would need to have two other jobs. That, and you'd have to move to Switzerland to get them. Yeah. So, uh, but the nice thing about that is, is our cigar lounge has an agreement with the Patoro Cigar Lounge. And if you're a member at our lounge and you go to Switzerland... They reciprocate and recognize your membership, and you're able to go into their lounge and enjoy. And I don't want I don't want to disparage industrial cigar, but the Patoro Lounge evidently has a four star Michelin chef, yeah, on premise who uh, cooks there on a regular basis. Yeah, and so when well, you show up, their they, lounge is also oh, in a mean, in I, an old medieval castle too, isn't it? That I don't know. I, I thought it was in a, I thought part of it is part of some old castle. So, you know, they, they got a little bit of one up. It's kind of hard to find old castles here in Texas. Ah, maybe we should build one. <laughs> but the, Build an so, old castle. How do you build an old castle? So the Patoro XO VA for very aged, it's the only cigar that does not have the classic P and the star on it. Instead, it has the Patoro crest. Um, and again, it is it is the best of the best uh, on their line. Um, it also comes in an extra bellicoso and an extra robusto size. Yep, which is a five and five sixteenths by fifty five for the bellicoso, and the robusto is a five by fifty five. Yeah. Okay, and then we've already talked about the cigarellos. No wait, so the 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 flavors on on that, I. I I shudder to try to explain it, and I'm using stuff from their site, but I get a lot more flavors out of it, but I do get a lot of the flavors they talk about, a toasty coffee, a dark creamy chocolate, a little bit of sweet and spicy honey yep. uh, out of it. But that cigar for me also just moves so much throughout the cigar. Um, well, you know, and and, uh, and and part of that has to do with the, 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 the shape. The size, yeah. And, and the shape. Because you've got more wrapper down here at the beginning, right? And then it filters down, and so you're getting a lot of the the uh, twelve year old wrapper, and then as you go down, you start getting more and more of the filler uh, in relation, and yep. then it finishes out nicely and smoothly at the end. Yep. I mean, you know, it, it's, it's all about design. I mean, it's just not let's throw some tobacco together and see what right. it does. So the and then the cigarillos, which. Look at my uh, note card for cigarillos. That's it. They didn't really have anything. They just said, oh, cigarillos, here's for a quick smoke. Now, <laughs> you were partially right, and I'm going to correct you. Uh-oh. And I might have to take a gold star for this. All okay? right. I'll let you take one. Uh, the Extra Bellicoso is not out yet. Oh, no, it's not. It's not. That's the one they that's have releasing a this year. They have a Bellicoso, but they're coming out with an Extra Bellicoso yeah. uh, this summer. June is when it's supposed and to be here. And June is supposed to be here. And that's a uh, 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 supposed to hit. They've also got a new uh, Batoro Vintage coming mm -hmm. out, which uh, uh, is going to be a five and an eighth by forty-eight. Yep. Uh, and again, that's going to be a ten-year-old right uh, wrapper. Yep. And then they're doing another Platino. Uh, which is going to be another uh, Dominican which is excellent, and it's going to be yeah, 
we when we did that dinner that you didn't get to go to. Oh. Pablo brought him in, and he hadn't even smoked it yet. He was nervous to let us smoke it with him, but he let he let. There was five of us that went to this dinner. We won a drawing, and got to go to a dinner. And so this one that's getting ready, this this platino, this black label one that's coming out. Um, first batch that had been out and had aged and was ready to go, and the owner, our co co founder Pablo, hadn't even smoked it yet. And uh, we got to smoke it with him for the, his first time and our first oh. time. And it was an You know what? That makes me hate you more. You know that, Excellent right? cigar. It was. <laughs> um, I, I, can't, to, I can't wait to get that one. I wanted to win that one so bad I could taste it. Oh, I, and you won. You I, sorry, sorry. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go back to these, these VAs, though. Uh, okay. The XO. Just to say the box that these come in. Oh, yeah. Now... I want to apologize to everybody. You're looking at us the whole time. Uh, eventually, I'm going to learn how to switch screens, and we'll bring <laughs> up full pictures and better video of the products that we're showing and that type of thing. So bear with us as we uh, adjust to the learning curve. Uh, but uh, the box, the, the, the box has got shaved uh, tobacco in it. It's packed, and, and it's one of the few boxes or cigars that they do that they come in 30 to a box. Is it 30 to a box? It's 30 to a box. You bought 30 of those at one time? Yeah. Mr. Money Bags? Oh, my God. Well, it's, I got my you know tax check back, so, you know, I... You blew it all on one box of cigars. Yeah, I did. <laughs> but that box of cigars is still wrapped in the cellophane. I haven't even opened it because oh. I want it to sit and continue to age. But the box itself... Is a work. The reason of I'm art. laughing at work it is because art. I know what he pays for these, and these are about a thirty-three dollar a piece cigar, ouch. and he bought yeah, thirty. Ouch. <laughs> so my producer those, was like, "Oh, ouch!" <laughs> so, uh, so, uh, so uh, for those of you who are uh, math deficient, don't try. Uh, <laughs> but at least I get a fifteen percent discount. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Our producer's like, "Can I smell that?" He doesn't know this, but I've got one of those at the house waiting for him. So, good, yeah. good. Oh, He's gonna get to smoke that. So good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> You're right, that smells incredible. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I do want to jump back to um, how uh, the Reyes family, who does the 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 tobacco farm six generations in the Dominican Republic, got there. It's kind of a little bit of backstory. Um, and I'm just going to hit it real quick. Okay. They were originally in Cuba. Yep. The whole uprising that happened in the late 50s and finally uh, in 1960 uh, left Cuba. Yep. Went to the Dominican Republic. And um, when he got there, had taken some seeds with him, but still wrote back home. And what they would do is some of the Cuban seeds, they would wrap it in pieces of cotton put it in an envelope and mail it over to him in the Dominican Republic. And then he would take it out of the cotton and plant right. those seeds. And that's how the Cuban seed, at least for the Reyes family, got, got over the to the Dominican Republic. Republic and how he started his farm over there. And then of course, once you've started your, you get the tobacco over there, you're still getting yeah, the because same the, Cuban the, the, seed. The, and, you know, and that's one of the interesting <laughs> things about tobacco. The seeds are minute. I mean, they are, and I don't want to say they're mustard seed size, but they're close right. to mustard seed size, yeah. and they're very, very tiny. And you could, yeah, you could, uh, and, and just a little bitty square about that, you could fit, you know, seventy-five, a hundred of them. And I know that's not a very good representation at this range, but uh, you know, they're they're like little fine pieces of grain sand. Uh, and so, if if you had a piece a piece of cotton. That had a whole bunch of uh, cotton seed or uh, tobacco seed in. You may wind up with a thousand seeds in just a single yeah. little piece of cotton. But it, uh, it was interesting, to kind of learning how how it how it started, how he left, how it how the Cuban seed got over there, well, you know, and how he was the, able uh, to cultivate and preserve it and use it. And that's and one of the interesting things today. about the whole Cuban re Revolution was how many tobacco growers who escaped Cuba before uh, uh, it was all said and done and went to Ecuador and the Dominican Republic yep. and uh, who am I leaving out here? Uh, Nicaragua. 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 And, yeah. uh, and even... El Salvador, yeah. And, and even uh, 
uh, the United States. Yeah. Well, some of them and, did go to the states first, yeah. and then ended up going different places yep. after and, that. And they brought those Cuban seeds with them. And you know, we always think of Cuba as the uh, the the beginning of tobacco and cigar tobacco and that type of thing. Are you going to prove? I am. <laughs> and so, uh, uh, we're, well, we're, well, we're getting there. The the deal is, is we can trace back. Well, Christopher Columbus actually, dis, uh, when he discovered, brought. Cuban tobacco back with him after he discovered Cuba, not the United States. But, uh, and we can trace that back a thousand years. The funny thing is, we can trace back tobacco to Peru 3,000 years. So, somehow or another, that Peruvian tobacco seed wound up in Cuba, and Cuba turned it into a money bag. And then every everything had been kind of that was the measuring stick was Cuba, but yep. really, it's not really the exact origin of the Cuba. Tobacco isn't really Cuba, it's actually from Peru, and you hear that very little, that's a little known fact. Yep, and when we hit Atabay yep. and Nelson Alfonso, then we will start hitting Peru hot and heavy. Yeah. Um, no, so I think that was. Oh, let's see if we had any more questions from our producer or anyone else that decided to jump on. Uh, I think it. I think the producer was it. He did a great job. The pictorial Instagram is pretty incredible. Yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. The uh, uh, and if you don't follow uh, tobacco companies, uh, I hope that these uh, little talks are educational and you'll start kind of looking at something different. And to be honest. Uh, Chris and I, and I'm uh, and I'm saying this without checking with him first, but I'm I guarantee that it's going to be fact. Almost everything we're going to do in the beginning is nothing but boutique uh, cigar companies. Uh, we are not going to hit Rocky Patel for a long while. We're not going to hit uh, Arturo Fuente anytime soon. We're going to be hitting the small boutique cigar uh, companies who do something unique and something different, and who have a pa passion for cigars and not just making cigars as fastly and quickly as they can no you're 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 right on i mean a lot of the cigars that i smoke now i never smoked before for a couple of reasons number one i didn't know they existed um and while i smoked cigars for 20 years i was a i'll call it a brand name smoker you know, the biggest and most and popular will, brand and names. And we will get into branding when we talk about principle. Or or even crux, too. Well, we yeah. We can talk a little most, bit about that. Yeah, but, but yeah, but, but, but principle, yeah. yeah. Um, and so, so. But, you know, now in the past, I would say my knowledge about cigars uh, and understanding of the process and appreciation for cigar companies, growers, rollers, designers, everything... I've probably learned more in three years than I learned in the first 20 years about cigars, so. I tell you what, it's, it's, a, it's a very, very fun lifestyle. I'm not gonna call it a hobby because uh, hobbies uh, are, are something entirely different. This is more of a lifestyle and... Uh, uh, How I many cigars do you no typically smoke on an average? An average week. Do you smoke one a day, uh, two a day, or uh, you know, if I'm lucky, I smoke one a day. I don't get to smoke as often as I'd like to. Uh, part of the reason is the environment that I live in, and as busy as I am, uh, you know, I, I work a lot. You know, between my regular job and my second job, I work a lot, so it doesn't give me a lot of time. But uh, actually, with the whole COVID thing, I have smoked much more than I would have normally. Yeah. Uh, because weather's nice, I can sit on my back porch and smoke a cigar and work, and I can't do that in regular life. And if I could do that on a regular basis, I'd smoke easily three or four of them a day. Uh, yeah, so since the COVID thing, I've definitely smoked more. I've smoked a minimum of two a day for 62 days in a row, if not three or four on some of those days. So. You do the math and figure out how many hundreds of cigars I've smoked in the past two months. Um, but before that, I would probably smoke three or four times a week and probably in a sitting when I go in the lounge, we're talking, 
probably about two, maybe three cigars. Depends on if it was a game day or what was going on and how late I got into the shop. And let's talk about your record. My record? Yeah. Well, 62 days. I'm so No. Oh, you're talking. single day. Oh, single day record. I did it two days in a row when we were in Cuba. We went to Cuba about this time last year. Yes. Actually, it actually was this time. Well, maybe a week later. <laughs> yep. I did eight cigars in a day, two days in a row, and I probably could have gotten nine or ten, but I slept in, you know, so I slept late. I was on vacation. <laughs> I was going to enjoy it, right? But I went from... The so the day that I did it, eight cigars the first day. Ron and a couple other guys went out on this long tour and went got got out to a farm. And me and one of the other guys, Mark, we decided we would scout all of the cigar lounges in Cuba for the guys and figure out oh this is the best one to go to. This one has this type of cigars. Oh this one does rolling. This one doesn't. Whatever. And so we started out late late breakfast, early lunch. You know around ten thirty, eleven o'clock and hit all the different lounges we wanted to um, and bought some cigars, some hand-rolled cigars, and I ended up getting through eight cigars that day uh, and probably was smoking my the eighth cigar probably around 10 o'clock that night on the front patio right there uh, in front of the water. Our house was right we've there got, on the water. We've got, to, we've got to plan another trip back to Cuba. Yeah, that was fun. Like you got to go to Switzerland. Switzerland we do too. need to go to Switzerland. <laughs> you de- uh, right. We definitely need to go to Switzerland. Uh, after uh, after all the COVID stuff. After the, all the COVID stuff, I want to do one more trip to Cuba, and then I want to start going to like Switzerland. Then we'll go to Spain. I want to go see uh, uh, Casa Torrent. I want to go down to Casa. Got to got to go down to Mexico. Mexico. Yeah. But I'm not going to Mexico without uh, Edgar as an yeah, escort. Exactly. Otherwise, I'll wind up a dead white guy. <laughs> Just another dead white guy. <laughs> Uh, yeah. So and they and they and they've got super hornets down there too. I don't uh, know whether whether they're killer hornets or not, but uh, <laughs> uh, we'll tell that story when we're do, talking about Casa Torrent. We may even bring Nathan in for that one. Well, and we've got we've got uh, oh so just to uh, so we can say we had a guest on our first very yeah, first come show. on over here. So we'll introduce our our producer our producer. This is my buddy uh, John from South Carolina that came in drove thirteen hours to come visit came with his wife and kids. They were tired he of being... Because sucker tattooed on his forehead. Yeah. Yeah, right there. T- tired of being um, <laughs> cooped up in the house during all this time and came to visit. Uh, John and I have known each other uh, for a long time. Uh, as long as you've been smoking cigars. Yeah, about 20 years, yeah. So, um, and his uh, mohawk is inspired by his uh, six-year-old son who got his hair cut into a mohawk and then dared his dad to do it. And so uh, he, did, he did it as There's well. There's worse things to do as a dad, believe me. Yeah. So... Uh, they they drove in and surprised me today, and I said, "Hey, uh, I got this uh, thing I'm going to go do. Why don't you come with me?" And so he came in and uh, acted as our producer and, today. And and I am glad to have him here. I, you know me, I love to share my scotch and my cigars with new friends, and so that gave me the perfect opportunity. Now, uh, hopefully, eventually, we'll have a much better setup here. Chris and I will have uh, matching chairs. We'll have a nicer desk, and <laughs> we'll have a real background. Uh, Nothing but wrong with our background. That's fine. I, background. I, I like that background. That's great. Uh, I, I think it looks good. You know, uh, uh, next time I'll position the camera just a hair so I'm not seeing the, the clips clip. on the, yeah. on the, on the uh, side, uh, your side over there. <laughs> but uh, yeah, see, I, I, I could have slid that over just a little bit, but We're somebody good. somebody was like two minutes before showtime before they even showed up, so I had to do all the show prep by myself. Well, I had to I had to get the kids fed and uh, you know. Situated well, see, for bed, so. See, I had promised to feed him, too. And see, he missed out on that. We had uh, chicken fajitas for dinner, so. Well. If you're still hungry, there's still some. Um, so I'm going to call this a show. We're about 25 minutes longer than we had anticipated. We had anticipated. Oh, wow. Yeah, we did yeah. go pretty long. Uh, but you know what? It was fun. It was fun, and I don't care. And as long as we start around 7 o'clock and run as long as we feel like going i think it's going to be a great show i really enjoyed and i did i wrote up all kinds of note cards i really enjoyed doing the research the research now I, and i'm gonna and I'm it was gonna a little you, it was a little was, challenging uh, there, there was i wanted to do more research but it's been a busy week for me and i really didn't get a chance to sit down and actually start looking at stuff till monday 
I, and so I didn't do mine until Monday either. And so, so and and you know I I worked all day Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. And I, and I wanted to try and pull up more about the lounge there and the restaurant and this four star guy. And yep. briefly mentions it on their website, but it doesn't have a lot of information. So I was going to try and Google it, but I just again I didn't. We've got jobs. We got stuff. We, we got do, stuff so. to do. And but. that's part of the reason why we're doing this show because you guys don't have time to research this stuff. We'll make time for you. Hopefully, you'll find something interesting and intriguing about a company and decide to track down some of their stuff. And uh, if you don't know where to find it, hit us up. We'll get some some somehow yeah. or another. And look, I just touched my mic. So yeah. I, uh, but uh, the whole thing of the whole cigar culture, and you know, and that's one of the things for, that tells it from the lounge wants to be about is cigars, cigar companies, and cigar culture. Uh, I'm not going to do cigar reviews. We may talk about cigars, but uh, I I don't want to talk about uh, uh, do cigar reviews. I've considered them kind of subjective because everybody's palate's different. Yep. You know, there are people out there who like Gurkha. I don't get it. You know, so <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I'll I'll admit that early on in my cigar days, I did smoke a couple of Gurkhas. I have not smoked a Gurkha yet. Ever? I have not, but I like, uh, but I love all the jokes about it. It's yeah. just hilarious. Uh, but you know, somebody may smoke the, a Patoro that they that they just think stinks, and I'll have to call them crazy. So even though you know, <laughs> it's just the three of us watching right now, I'm gonna throw this out there. Um, feel free to give us a suggestion of a cigar company you would like us to research. You'd Absolutely. like to know more about. Absolutely. But for next week, who are we gonna do? Are who do you we... want to do? I feel like you're wanting to do principal. We can do principal, or we can do there's, uh, we can do several others. Or crux. crux. You want to do crux? Let's do crux. Let's do crux. We'll do crux next. And week. we'll see if Brandon's interested in swinging by. Okay. Yeah. Since we're going to be talking about the the brand. Yeah. And the branding, and so the reason that uh, you heard the crux in the background, um, my buddy John can't get crux. At least the cigar shop near him in South Carolina doesn't have him. So. You'd About him. once every month and a half, I'll ship him uh, one of each and, and ship you, it to have him. Have you given him a Limitada yet? Uh, he has not had the Limitada yet, but I do have one also waiting for him at the house. So You have a good friend. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to call this show. Thanks, everybody who didn't show up. <laughs> Fuck y'all. <laughs> Hopefully, you'll catch this on a later broadcast and find it interesting. And you can also hit me up on Tales from the Lounge uh, on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, I think I even got a Tumblr account. I don't know. Do you have a TikTok? And uh, I do not have a TikTok. I am not TikToking. <laughs> and whatever else there is out there. Yeah. Uh, but thanks for joining. And if you liked it, subscribe. We will be here next Wednesday, the exact same time, seven o'clock. And I'll be here early. And he'll be here early. <laughs> and uh, if you got any questions, hit us up. We'll be happy to help you out. Good night. Thanks, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, hit that like button. If you want to see more of our stuff, hit the subscribe button. And if you want to get notified, hit that bell. You know what to do. If you want to see more Saturday at the Shop and Tales from the Lounge stuff, hit the playlist, check out our channel, and let us know what you think. Love your feedback. Have a great day.